Well, welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed me trying to dunk a little water on Solomon. And it was tempting, but I did not dump the whole thing on him after we were done either. And so now we will proceed to read the rest of our scripture for today, which is 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 12. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours and actually, I've read too far. I was going to stop at verse 9. So let's stop there. I'm like, wait a minute. That doesn't sound much like what I worked prepared for my sermon. <laughs> so there are probably some of us living in a continual state of hope plus anxiety. Anxiety is a strange beast as fear can cause anxiety and anxiety can cause fear. Let's not tiptoe around this whole anxiety thing because there is certainly plenty to be anxious about. Coronavirus, the AI economy, lost wages, the stock market plunging, if small businesses or even large businesses will survive most of us staying home. And this is just the stuff directly, well, other than the, the egg economy. Well, actually, that is related to the coronavirus um, pandemic. Um, you know, these aren't the other concerns that all of us have from day to day. And let me tell you, I've got a little anxiety with um, trying to ensure that my children get all their schoolwork done right now. So it is a little ironic that back in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34, it tells us to only worry about today. When the very meaning of the word hope means to have a feeling of expectation about what's coming or that we are wanting something to happen. And one of the reasons Jesus came is so that we could have hope and be looking forward. Through the resurrection of Jesus, we have been given new life. Verse 3 says, new birth. And we have been born again into a living hope. This is a hope that never runs out. So this letter of 1 Peter was written to encourage these early believers to embrace their identity as Christ followers and help them not to conform to the pressures and values of the world. <laughs> Which is hard to do. Am I right? Or hard not to do. But hear this good news. God is a God of second chances. And we can always say, Let's try this again. We are fortunately getting into what might be spring. I hate to say for sure. And spring reminds us of new birth. 
the old vegetation gives way to the new green shoots. Sheep, cattle, pigs, and other animals are giving birth to their young. New birth is kind of always an entanglement with life and death, old and new, perishable and imperishable. For us to have new life, there has to be death. Death to choices we make that are not in accordance for us to move more deeply into the life-giving relationship that we have with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Death to doubting our faith because things just aren't going our way. We're sick, we're broke, or we're stuck. The recipients of this letter called 1 Peter were suffering from trials and challenges of their faith, just like we do. When our faith is tested, we come out stronger if we hold on to hope, like a rope. We become refined like gold as the fire or suffering of life burns off the impurities of our faith our sins, and the areas in which our faith is shallow. Some of us can attest to the fact that getting our driver's license was a trial. And there were some impurities of bad driving burned off, or maybe it was rubber that was burnt. Here is the car that I learned how to drive on and that I took my driver's license test with. Now this is not the actual car, it's a car that I found on the internet, a picture of an 87 Toyota Camry, just like we had. Now this wasn't a bit, very big car and I thought it was quite the luxury mobile um, and I didn't always get to drive that nice of a car but that was what my parents were driving and that's um, what they let me drive as I practiced driving. And so I went to take my driver's license test. And as we were going around, things were going well. And I had executed things enough to pass or, or um, I hadn't had any marks. He hadn't written on the, the sheet at all. And it was Lamore, North Dakota. There really weren't two cars to parallel park between. And so he found, um, one way up and one way back. And he said, well, I'll just kind of try to, try to show me you can parallel park here. And I mean, that's not a very big car. You'd have to be kind of a bonehead not to be able to park that thing, right? Well, as I got turning back into the spot, I realized, wait a minute, this is going bad and I'm gonna hit the curb here, which is an automatic fail. And so I took, I stopped, I took a deep breath and I said, do you mind if I try this again? And he gave me grace and let me start over and I was able to pull it off the next time and I ended up passing my driver's test. Now I wanna make sure everyone knows that God doesn't send suffering to punish us for our sins. Like suffering is an effect of evil. And evil has been present since the beginning of time. Evil is what tempted Adam and Eve to sin in the Garden of Eden. Evil will attack us. And in my own personal belief or experience, if you will, evil will attack us, especially in a time of significant faith growth or when we are becoming particularly effective at sharing the message of Jesus' love for us. Oh, the things that happen to the clergy in my covenant group. Sometimes I can hardly believe all of the things that afflict our small group of five. Okay, so if we aren't going to be judging someone that God you know, that we thought God had sent their suffering to because of their sins. Yet we also 
need to remember that we can't look at a person's situation from the outside and tell that person their suffering is making their faith stronger. Each person has to determine that on their own. We can share with someone how a time of struggle made our faith stronger, but don't lose the emphasis on their story because of our story. I think most of us can attest that our faith is tested every day. Just like my parallel parking, there are times when we simply need to start over. When we are overwhelmed, we need to pause and say, let's try this again. It's times like that when our faith is revealed. The Greek word for anew, as in born anew, is anagenesis. Anagenesis can also be translated as regenerated. Every day gives us opportunities for renewal and regeneration. Renewal and regeneration is not a one and done kind of thing. It is an ongoing process for the rest of our lives. We have unlimited opportunities to say, let's try this again. When you have no more hope, energy, desire, the words of this letter should encourage you to not lose hope as salvation is unfolding around you. Look at verse 8 of our scripture. We love him and believe in him, which causes us to rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy because we know the outcome of our faith is the salvation of our souls. In this time of uncertainty, it is also spring. Let us also be a product of spring newness while embracing a lifestyle of renewal and regeneration, knowing that our God, no matter how tough things are, will let us say, let's try this again. Let us pray. Jesus, Savior, resurrected Messiah, we come before you from different paths, some of us certain of your joyful presence in our lives, some of us not so certain of the hope of being touched by your joy. Yet we are all here reaching out to you for understanding, for hope, for joy, for all that is imperishable. Meet us here today with the provenient grace that leads us to you. Surprising God, we came to Easter through the long Lenten journey in which you have called us to examine our inner lives. Then on Easter, it is as though we have been freed from our darkness to walk in the light with you. However, Easter and its celebration so quickly slide into the past and we again are tempted to move back into our doubts and fears. Surprise us again, Lord, by reminding us that the signs of Jesus' resurrection are all around us. As we remember this day, our dear friends who suffer from illness and loss, Lord, help us to be a presence of comfort for them, for those who are lost and alone, alienated from family and friends. We ask that you empower us to reach out in compassion, offering appropriate help that will lift them into new life with you. And for ourselves, we ask for the extra measure of faith so that as doubts arise, we may meet them with confidence and emerge as strong witnesses to your love. In Christ's name, we offer this prayer that he taught us. Please pray with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I miss you all, and my heart is full, knowing that you remain faithful and connected by watching these messages. Please also stay faithful and connected by supporting the church with financial gifts as you are able. I will post the link for St. John's Electronic Giving on their Facebook page, and checks can always be sent to Marcus or the church. Cancel can send financial contributions to Buffa or Dean. So now before I go on to give the blessing, some of you are aware that I've been trying to make some improvements to my physical health. And one of those ways is by avoid, avoiding carbs, um, especially sugar. And after the blessing, I'm going to play a clip um, about how things went for me yesterday. <laughs> and, and I think you'll find that it's applicable to the message. And so please either stand or bow your head or however you feel most appropriate to receive the blessing today. And I'm going to try both hands now because Reagan told me it looked like it was Heil Hitler the last time I blessed you. In great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope for it is is the risen Christ who stands in our midst and says, peace be with you. We go forth knowing that we will say, let's try this again, repeatedly, as we journey on the, new pa on the path of new life and living hope. Amen. Thanks for being here.